Well, hello there, my brothers and sisters. It's Josh Packard. Welcome to another episode of The Golden Image of Churchianity is a Lie. Thank you for joining me today. If this is your first time, welcome. Hey, um, the times are moving. The, it's getting so interesting outside right now because because it, everything that God is showing us is leading is life versus death, um, and entering into life and the eternal life, like literally, not just this. Oh, we're gonna die and go to heaven because you, if you die, you don't go to heaven. If you die, you're gonna go to the grave, and the grave is a good thing. And the fact that it's a container holding you until the resurrection it means you're not annihilated. You're just asleep. But anyone who dies, anyone who has died, is asleep right now. There, it's necessary to be resurrected. Okay, um, Hell is not a place of eternal conscious torment. That's not what happens there. It's just you ran out of batteries. You, you just died. You're just in the grave. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. In order to go on into eternal life, you have to live. So you, so think about it this way: you have to, you have to live to go to heaven. You can't die to go to heaven. It doesn't work that way. Anything that dies goes to hell or the grave or whatever you want to call it. We're in the generation that is not going to have to go there. God has given us the insight. We can see what's going on. What, what every other generation has lacked, we can now see. God is making his priesthood right now. Those that are that are in the millennial reign and those that are going to be his 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 highest priests. That's because uh, we know Jesus is the high priest after the order of Melchizedek, but we're his priesthood. But we're like the highest order of the priests. Um I know that sounds so arrogant to say, I guess. But the thing is is that God has appointed us unto this. This is where why we were even made. This is why all of the mothers and fathers, all the way coming down to us from all over the world, uh, were, were to make us for this generation that we would be the ones that would reign, that we would be the, the vessels capable of, of uh, manifesting God on this earth and bringing life. Because the way God has decided in order to re-enliven the earth um, is in the same way, in reverse, in the way that Adam and Eve, because of them, the earth fell. So you remember, heaven isn't somewhere over there, right? Heaven was here. This is where Adam and Eve were placed. This is where the the eternal beginning was, right? And we never got to see the final manifestation because it was corrupted so quickly. So uh, this world is going to be reinstated in the same way, in reverse, in the way that it was it was brought down. So, so a sinful conscience in Adam and Eve is what brought forth the destruction. A sinless conscience in Adam and Eve is what's going to bring back the resurrection, right? So God has to give us his life. So basically speaking, we were alive and living in the garden, right? We were alive and living before the fall. Then we became dead and dying. So the consequences of being dead and dying and sin and all this other stuff have to be removed in order for us to live eternally. So it was mercy for God to limit our life because if we would go on into eternal life, we're still religious, still full of sin and judgment and, and, and ignorance, we would never have the incentive to change, right? We would, But the thing was is that as you entered into hell or into into heaven with uh, hell in your heart, um, eternally it would manifest as eternal. It would be eternal conscious torment for you eventually. Because everybody talks about like the streets of gold and how it's going to be these harps and whatever is going to be, whatever your imagination of heaven is, if, if the sin in you, the deception in you isn't removed, no matter what, heaven would be the eternal conscious hell that we, we, uh, we've been told. There's some principles you have to understand. You don't have eternal life in yourself. It's evident because you die, right? Without the eternal life being God, without being connected to him, without receiving his life moment by moment, you will die. 
But as long as you stay connected to him, you shall live as long as he lives. Because he is the source of life. So life is the issue. So an, a living person does everything that God has intended them to do. You're not, there's no, you're not looking at whether you're the quality of whether you're good or bad, right or wrong, whether you're a sinner or a saint. You're not, you're not looking there anymore because those things um, are subjective to each person. The one the, where we have to go to the objective uh, realities, the objective being, being the thing that doesn't move or change, which is God himself. Satan was been, has been so effective in distracting us away from not believing God's eternal word, which was simply whenever he created up to the sixth day, right? And when Adam and Eve were created, he said, very good, right? Then on the seventh day, he rested from everything he created and made, right? So that pronouncement has been put over everything, over mankind, over everything that is, anything that lives, breathes, anything that is sentient, any, I mean, anything, God spoke over his entire creation, including you, very good. So somebody then comes along called the accuser. And he starts pointing at your actions. Starts pointing at your deeds. Starts pointing at your the, your thoughts. Starts pointing at everything in yourself, right? So what happens is, is that uh, religions were formed because of that conscience, because of people being accused by the enemy and their their way to prove that they weren't what Satan said they were. Well, see, the problem is, is whether you serve Satan or whether you reject Satan by your works, you're still serving his intention. You have to get away from the entirety of his whole system. So those that see the eternal word of God, which is Jesus, he is God. He is the eternal. He is the eternal expression of the eternal God, never changing. See, if God is, Jesus is, right? There's no separation. It can't be, because you have to have the Holy Spirit linked into this. You got to understand that that God is all that. Those are those are just his titles. Okay, he's got other titles on top of that. El Shaddai. You know, you keep going down through all the other titles he's been given: the God of God, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. You know, you, you just keep going down all these things. And there's, there's a, those are his eternal titles. You can't just, you know, separate God from those. Are you going to say that he can't be the king of kings because he's the God of gods? That doesn't make any sense. But, so, God has to be singular in you. You have to only look at one place. If you If you have a distraction away from that place, if you're going to some mediator, if you're going to some other person other than God, you you're missing the mark and you can't you can't receive his life so this is all about living see a living one is absolutely reconciled to god taking his life the quality of life having no need for lack no nothing because it's everything is all in this union right what we've been trying to do um see the law was to reveal unto us that we were dead and the fact that we tried to emulate what a living one would automatically be we show forth that we are dead in our efforts at trying to gain it because first of all if you're trying to gain it that means you're not it and so you're in this place called sin iniquity the iniquity is evidenced in the fact that you have to, you're trying to be something righteous. You're trying to be something good. You're trying to be reconciled. You're trying to get there, right? You're trying not to be a sinner. You're trying not to, you know, cuss, burp, fart. You're trying not to do all these things, which God doesn't care about, by the way. But still, so because you are dead, you're trying to do those things. You're trying to act like a living one. That's the evidence that you're dead, right? But the problem is, is since you have disconnected from God, your only source to generate the images of righteousness that you have conceived, um, you have to use shame, guilt, and fear, which are the power of death and sin. So 
you deplete yourself, deplete yourself, deplete yourself in all of your efforts at righteousness and trying to please God until you die and go to the grave. And you fall short, and you know you fall short because you can't possibly do the actions of a living one because you don't have the source the living ones do. So you condemn yourself, and you try to say, oh, no, I'm not dead. Oh, no, I'm not. Look at me. And you're you're just, to anyone living, you go, we just you just look dead. Anyway, I'm saying this to try to get you free from it. I don't, your religions, Christianity, denominations, everything that that we, we know as religion and pious is actually a demonstration of death. Once you see the eternal word of God, you're not going to be a, a Christian or a Muslim or a Mormon or any of these things. You're, you don't care anymore. Those are meaningless. Those are meaningless things. And they're all, those are all cult worshiping death. All of them. Once you see Christ as the eternal word where God has said very good, that you've been concluded in that very good, then you see the deception. You see who's, who's, who are the children of the devil and who are the children of righteousness, the children of God. It's really easy to see once you can see it. I know your doctrines tell you that you have to believe you have to accept. You have to repent. That's a lie. You were saved that you would believe and accept and repent. Somebody heard me the other day and overheard everything that I was sh- saying, right? And he was listening off the ground. And then he, all he, as soon as I, as soon as he thought I said that you don't believe, that it is not necessary to believe in Jesus to be saved, he shut down, won't listen to anything else. Which, you know, I don't care. But for his sake, I was like, are you kidding me? Showing you all this other stuff that you haven't seen and you shut down because you perceived that one thing? Well, believing in Christ is salvation. But you can't generate it yourself in your effort to generate it yourself. You have to use condemnation in order to do it, which means you're in the wrong wrong place anyway. See, Christians don't know what salvation means. They think it's getting out of hell. And it is, in a kind of a way. But they're thinking this eternal conscience torment of hell, which would be their faith if they entered into eternal life um, without being fixed. Hell is not that. Hell is a container that you're being held until the time of reformation to where you can be healed. It's good news that you aren't being annihilated. Okay? It's It's a place of mercy because if God let you go on into eternal life, being fallen and, and subject to your religious ideas, then it would be an eternal conscious hell for you. That's why the tree of life had to be guarded. Well, you can't eat it. That's why everybody's been dying. Okay? But the way to that tree is now open. So I'm trying to tell you. It's him. We can see him as he is. We can approach him as he is. We have no more fear anymore. We have no more guilt, no more shame. We're not comparing with, you know, I think it's funny because religions are like like playing cards, you know, like your Pokemon cards where I've got this one, he's stronger than yours, and I've got this one, he's stronger than yours. And you guys are just throwing around your cards and everybody's just looking at you going, oh, cute little babies playing cards. And that's how religions operate. Everybody's so caught up in getting their cards and their, their powers ups and all these other things that they, they, they're completely distracted from the reality of the world. They don't understand. They don't, they're still thinking these shiny objects mean something. And they don't. They're just cards. Life is the only thing that matters. Eternal life. Read anything that Solomon says. Go to Ecclesiastes. Go to Proverbs. Go to any of this stuff. Everything is vanity. Everything you're doing, every single thing, if it's apart from God, it is vanity and it will end in death. The only wise one, the only, the only thing that is worthy of pursuit is eternal life. Otherwise, everything you are goes to the trash can. Never to be remembered in the conscious world like we know it now. Your children will be with you. They will die with you. They'll go to the container with you. 
Everything we've done is just absolute worthless before God. Absolutely worthless. Not only worthless, but destructive and contrary to his kingdom, to his word. Satan has tricked us. See, Satan doesn't want to use his own hand to kill us. That's too easy. That's beneath him. What he wants to do is twist you into killing yourself. And he's done it. Every single Christian has died. Other than Jesus, right? Well, he died too, but he rose. So, and he wasn't a Christian at all. I mean, just so you know. Because he was the Christ. So if he's the way, the truth, and the life, then what, so then what's happening? It says, the gospel says, if we believe in him, then we should never die, right? So everybody's been dying. So Satan has been has been excellent in using this church and the church systems and pastors and all these things that we know to keep you blind and ignorant and directed away from the singular truth of God. Because the truth is what will set you free. The truth is what imparts life. The truth, the truth, the truth. All you know is the lie, the, the, the recreation of the lie, where Satan in the garden told Eve, he says, you know what, you'll be like God if you eat that, right? Well, the problem was she already was like God. So now she's doing something different. She, Her conscience, once she ate and Adam ate, they covered themselves. It's that, that trying to fix themselves, trying to cover themselves, trying to look righteous, shows that they're dead. Someone who's alive, they don't care. They've already, they're already fellowshipping with God. They already know Him. They're already walking with Him. They're already sharing with Him and sharing His life and His being and His His character and His person. We're not trying to do things and follow rules and traditions and all these things in order to to still. It's like once you've entered in, you're in. You're just like, oh, I'm already in. Who cares? It's you've already passed the finish line. But those of you who are still Christians and and Muslims and and Mormons and Jehovah's Witnesses and you just go down the line, Hindus, you're still you haven't crossed the finish line yet because all your works are teaching you to go the other way. All your efforts, your conscience, everything is driving you away from life, and you're gonna die. And you're going to go to hell. It's so funny how Satan has twisted everything. Because if you did, if you went into eternal life with God, because God is the fire, right? If sin is not dealt with in you, if you're not purged from death, if you go into eternal life, even if the streets are golder there, even if it's so beautiful on the outside, you just it brings tears to your eyes. Because death resides in you and it goes on to eternity, death will manifest each year, each moment, deeper and darker into isolation, into fear, into shame, into jealousy, into rage, into it'll just keep developing and you just keep imagine in a hundred years what we do less than a hundred years up to you know wars and all the things we do just in that short little time extrapolate that even further to eternity if that sin isn't dealt with in you if death is not overcome by you you you'll be forever tormented and i mean you see what i mean by our ideas of you died and go to heaven you would just be uh, that would be eternal conscious torment but the the truth is is that when you die you go to the grave out of mercy cuz god not willing that you should be lost is is keeping you pent up in hope cuz you're neither cuz a lot of people teach so there's two different schools some people teach i mean two main schools i mean other people have all kinds of crackpot ideas but the one says you die and go to this eternal conscience hell. You know what I mean? That you're just being punished forever and ever for your, un, your you're not believing. And it's like... And the second is just annihilation to where you're just gone. Eternal blackness, sleep. That's it. You're just erased. Both of those are wrong. See, hell is a place of mercy. 
so that you're not, so that God, until when sin can be dealt with and Satan be dethroned on the powers of principalities and everything legally, and and according to the overcoming of the saints, until that happens, um, he's got to have these people. He's got them in remembrance. That's what that's what the pit is for. It's for death. It's so he doesn't. He's not losing anybody. He's still got them contained, right? Not annihilated. Not being tortured. Just asleep. Then in the end, well, not the end because it's really the beginning. But at the end of this age, this next age after the millennial reign and the great white throne and all this other stuff, every, I mean, everything is going to get caught back up. Well, I should say before the great white throne, everything gets caught back up. It gets resurrected back up. And resurrect just means to be standing back up again. That's it. And then everything's going to be dealt with. That's what the lake of fire is for. That's what everything is so that people can enter into eternal life. And by that time, God's going to have his priesthood. That's going to be us. And everything is going to come and worship at our feet. And everything's going to know that God has loved us. They did. It's just the way it is. We have been given, whether anyone likes it or not, anyone else besides us, because we were just content with just being janitors, just lucky to be there, picking up trash in God's kingdom. We don't care. We'll be the lowest shoe shiners. We don't give a shit as long as we're in. We don't care. But God didn't stop there. He went, no, no, no. Here's your white robe, because he adopted us. Here's your white robe. Here's your kingly robe. Here's your priestly robe. Here's your scepter, here's your crown, and here's your seat right next to me on the right hand. What, Regardless of what you think about me, I'm going to take what he's given me. I hope you do too. Okay, so um, as I've been reading through the scriptures again, and once God told me about, he told me about three or four weeks ago, he said, uh, now that you can walk on water, because we've learned how to keep our eyes on him. We know how to do it now. Now that you know how to walk on water, he says, You're, my, my words are being m- become much clearer to you. It will be much more easier to understand for you. So, um, anyways, and they massively have, and everything shifted. Everything has shifted. It's like a, you know, a paradigm shift where everything just went, boop. It was, oh, what I used to see is this was the important thing. So, like, John 12, 30 was one of my favorite places where where my chapters where it says that if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. And I thought that was like the deepest, amazing thing where everything is being brought back to him. So that means everything's reconciled, right? If he was lifted up, everything is going to be reconciled to him. And I thought that was like the most mind-blowing, deepest thing. But it's not. (laughs) It's amazing. It's a part. But the the more amazing thing is the life. Yes, you guys. Life is the way. Life does all the work. And life is only able to be obtained in one place and that's why all the denominations and why all the different religions have kept failing because they're they're all divided amongst themselves they are all pointing to other things besides the messiah besides the god's absolute word that he spoke that it would never change not from the beginning to the end that that everything's been pronounced over you already before the world was even created whatever whatever you think you are according to the carnal reality that is not what you've been called by God. The titles that you've been given here are from Satan and from fallen men. Not from God. God has given you saint, king, priest, my child, beloved. This is what God has said and it continues to say over you every moment. But you go, no, nah, I'm a sinner. Oh, but at least I'm not, I'm not going to go to hell because I said the right prayer. Oh, gosh. Look at those poor Muslims and those poor Jews. They're all going to burn in hell for eternity. They're going to be tortured day and night because they didn't believe like I do. Well, then the Muslims are pointing to you saying, Infidels, you don't pray right. You eat pork. You do these things. You know they have all their deals, right? Then you have the, the atheists that call you guys a bunch of hypocrites because all the goodness you profess to do, they can see clearly that you don't. And you're dying. You die. This isn't the way to do it, you guys. Anyone who dies, I mean, it's like everybody's been doing business as usual, right? And for 2,000 years at least. I mean, all these offshoots of the Judaic religion, and it's just like they all keep dying. So then you're, all your religions are equal. Equally as bad, just like communism, right? 
Yeah, you're all equal. Equally dead. Worthless. I'm just telling you. I know you think your traditions mean something. And they it, that's great. Compare Christianity with Islam. And Christians always all high and mighty over, you know, and by, vice versa. Well, at the end, you guys both died. So now that's awkward, right? You died right along with the sinners. You died right along with all the... Everybody else, you died with all the, you know, Hindus and the fucking Buddhists and the, everybody else. You died with them just like them. What's different? So what does your religion avail? Really? I mean, honestly, I, I, I hate... See, everyone is in need of the life of Christ. They don't know it. They, so... So we can call, so God is the God of gods, right? And so whatever gods have been set up on this earth and whatever religions and whatever rules and stipulations and traditions each each religion has put up, God supersedes those. He's like, so what? That doesn't change my word. His word doesn't change. And that's our hope. And that is salvation. Because we look to him and his word and we reconnect in our spirit with him. And now life can be generated. Where we can stand back up, we can step up in resurrection, and our natural, in our bodies, our bodies can stand back up while we're walking. Well, there's no need for us to die and be put in a container. We just follow Christ right up on the living, unto eternal life. <laughs> so if we die, I mean, other than I get murdered or whatever, I mean, but if I die the natural death, then my religion is no better than yours, right? But if I live, and if I keep living and I don't die, then now that religion means something. It is not vanity. It is not worthless. It is, not, it is something different than the rest of them. Because Christianity has had no leg to stand on because you die, just like everyone else. Even though your scriptures clearly say, if you believed in Christ, that you would not die. That's awkward, isn't it? I always thought that was a kind of a huge contradiction, right? The scripture said I should never die, and yet I, I'm getting older and everything else. And because what was happening was I have not, I have not believed Christ. I have not believed the eternal word. I have not subjected myself to God as God yet. You know, I might have been a Christian. You know what I mean? And I, you know what I mean? I might have been all these other things, but that is meaningless. And it's in a distraction, especially if it's actually Satan running it, right? Where Satan is dressed as Jesus and everybody's calling Satan Jesus. Because we're we're esteeming according to our ideas of right and wrong and good and evil. And Satan is probably the best that we can imagine in death. So Satan has tricked you and fooled you that he is Christ or he is God. And you are his children, a liar. So anyway, I'm gonna keep. Let's go ahead and get. Let's get rocking in this. All right. Um, I'm gonna start in John eight twelve. I mean, as much as I want to do all this, this is we just took a time restraint because this is right after the woman who was caught in the act of adultery. You know, and 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 she should have been stoned to death, right? But Something, something, instead of death, life was the judgment. Okay. Okay. Um, this, no condemnation. He says, neither do I condemn. Thee. Let's just, let's just read it. What the hell? Okay. Jesus in chapter eight, Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. And early in the morning, he came again to the temple and all the people came come, came to him and he sat down and he taught them. And the scribes and the Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, they said, Master, this woman was taken in adultery, the very act. Now Moses in the law commanded to us that such should be stoned, but what sayest thou? This they said, tempting him that they might have to accuse him. So their traditions bring about death. Okay. But Jesus stooped down and with his finger wrote on the ground as though he heard them not. And I really think this is referencing to Jeremiah. Whenever there's a part where it says that, that all these people, all these prophets, all these people that seem to be something, they're all like writing it in the sand. They just The wind just 
blows them away with it. It's just they're they're so vain that it's, it's like an insult. So when they continued asking him, he lifted himself up and said, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. And again he stooped down and wrote, it on, wrote on the ground. And when they heard it, being convinced by their own conscience, went out one by one, beginning at the eldest, even unto the last. And Jesus was left alone and the woman standing in the midst. And when Jesus had lifted up himself and saw none but the woman, he said unto her, Woman, where are those thine accusers? Has no man condemned thee? She said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. And so their judgment was going to bring death, right? But he countered that with life. So they brought judgment and condemnation, and he brought life, right? No condemnation. Then he told her to go and sin no more. And this is, this is life is what causes this. No condemnation. So a sinless conscience is what allows you to see and approach back to God without fear. Because you're not trying to act or be anything. God doesn't heal through condemnation and rejection. He heals through love. He heals through equity. Okay. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that follows me shall not walk in darkness, but he shall have the light of life. So this is what this, this whole this whole idea between this woman that is caught in adultery. It, this is not about, it's about darkness versus li- light. Life versus death. Not about what she did, right or wrong, good or evil. Whether the Pharisees were right or wrong, good or evil. It, it's it's a literally, a, the, everything is life and death. There's no, the battle isn't versus good versus evil. And that's what we've been deceived on, right? The Pharisees therefore said unto him, You bear record of thyself, and your record is not true. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Though I bear record of myself, yet my record is true, for I know where I come, or where I came from, and I know where I go, but you cannot tell where I come and whether I go. You judge after the flesh, and I judge no man. So it's not like he's being this self-righteous I don't judge any man. It's it's he's the eternal word, right? He can't condemn. That's 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 not how he operates. It doesn't work that way. You can't bring somebody to life through condemnation, fear, shame, and guilt. It can't work that way, right? Yet if I judge, my judgment is true, for I am not alone, but I am the Father that sent me. It is also written in your law that the testimony of two men is true. He says, in your law, which is pretty funny. Because um, he's operating under another set of laws, which is the Melchizedek priesthood, right? That the testimony of two men is true. I am the one that bears witness of myself, and the Father that sent me bears witness of me. They said unto him, where is your father? And Jesus answered, you neither know me nor my father. For if you had known me, you should have known my father also. These words spake Jesus in the treasury as he taught in the temple, and no man laid hands on him, for his hour is not yet come. Then Jesus said again, or then said Jesus again unto them, I go my way, and you shall seek me, and you shall die in your sins. Whether I go, you cannot come. Well, this is the truth, and this is what's been happening to everybody. Everybody just keeps dying in their sins. It's a, see, death is the issue, not the sins, it's the death. <clears throat> then said the Jews, will he kill himself? Because he says, whether I go, you cannot come. Life. And he said unto them, you are from beneath, and I am from above. You are of this world, I am not of this world. I said therefore unto you that you shall die in your sins, for if you believe not that I am he, then you shall die in your sins. So what is he saying here? If you do not believe that I am he, who's he saying? Do you is he saying do you believe that I, if you don't believe I'm God, or if you are you believing if it's I'm Christ or both? Or the Son of Man or whoever it is, the Messiah, whatever. I mean, seriously, this is funny. You shall die in your sins. Then they said unto him, because because if he if the Messiah is to come, and if the eternal word 
shows on the earth, then um, and you don't believe it, who's who's your father, right? Then said they unto him, Who art thou? And Jesus said unto them, Even the same that I said to you from the beginning. And this is really cool. This is the beginning of what? The beginning of his ministry? The beginning of his life? Or the beginning of the world? I have many things to say and judge of you, but he that sent me is true. Isn't that crazy? He has, I have many things I could say of you and judge of you, right? But there's something different. He doesn't condemn that way. He, he, he's, his, cause he's true. He, he's the truth. So the, like Romans eight, therefore there is now no condemnation. So this, this idea that, that see condemnation is the only thing that we've ever known that we're sinners that we've fallen short that we have to be reconciled that we have blah 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 that our works and we're going to go to hell if we don't and i mean everything that we've seen is in the is in the realm of condemnation and death right so so then no condemnation he says i have many things i could judge you of he says but i don't he says because that's not what i do it's against the truth against himself against the eternal word and I speak to the world those things which I have heard of him. Which is no condemnation. Which is life, right? They understood not that he spake to them of the Father. Then Jesus, then said Jesus unto them, When you have lifted up the Son of Man, then you shall know that I am he, and that I do nothing of myself, but as my Father has taught me these things I speak. And he that sent me is with me. The Father has not left me alone, for I do always those things which please him. It's just crazy. It's just life. It's, it's just he, as being alive and being that eternal word, it's no condemnation pleases him, right? Pleases God. Life pleases him. Not your good deeds, not whether you memorized your Bible, not whether you're a Christian or a Mormon or a Muslim or anything like that. That doesn't mean anything to God. As he spake these words, many believed on him. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If you continue in my word, then you are my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Which is no condemnation, no accusation. That, that God's word has been pronounced over you very good. So the interesting thing that I was kind of God enlightened me on yesterday when I was teaching is that if he created the worlds, he created everything just by speaking it, right? Do you think that his making you absolutely perfect and bringing you to life will be anything to him? And he spoke it over you. So he spoke He spoke creation, then he spoke very good. Do you think he's not going to have that? His creation is not going to be very good? That you think he's going to lose anything that he's pronounced very good over? You don't think he's able to reconcile to the uttermost everything? They answered him, We be Abraham's seed, and we were never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, you shall be made free? And it's true. Jesus answered them, Truly, truly. And I, I love, because now every time I see this, verily, verily, I see truly, truly. It's like always, it's like always just, it's not just he's, he's not, it's like he's, He's saying it as a confirmation to the eternal truth. It's whenever you see things spoken twice, you're always like, oh, why did he say it twice? And it's always twice is the testimony of that truth. So he's saying, truly, truly, I say unto you, ever, and, uh, whosoever commits sin is the servant of sin. And he's not saying committing sins like doing bad things. He's saying committing sin, drawing your life from the power of sin, being death. Drawing your deeds and your works and your motivation and your unction from your desire to be good, from your desire to 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 obtain righteousness. That is the servant of sin. Any religion, anybody that's in a religion, anybody that still is separated in a denomination, anyone that is, is divided in God in any way, anyone that says, Oh yeah, there's God is one, Jesus isn't God, well, then you just divided him. You understand. Jesus is one of his titles. 
it, you can call him you can call him Jesus you can call him God you can call him you know Holy Spirit you can call him God of Gods King of Kings you know you, you, you he doesn't care what you call him as long as you call him but it it is all him otherwise you're looking at a multiple directions and if that is the case you've been deceived you cannot enter into life there's a very narrow path if you are looking in the opposite directions or you're looking in different directions you cannot enter in and the servant abides not in the house forever but the son abides forever and so those of us who have entered into life and have received the adoptions of sons, who have taken the white clothes and put on the royal apparel and have taken the scepter and the crown and have sat down on the right hand of God with Christ, which he has commanded us to do, because that's a humility to him. And that's our ultimate joy. It was what we were made to do. And life from the dead is all that matters, right? If you're a Christian today and you die, your religion has done nothing more for you than Islam or atheism or Satanism for that matter. You still died. Your religion was worthless. All your works were worthless. Everything you did, worthless. If the Son shall therefore make you free, you shall be free indeed. And that means free from sin and the power of darkness and the lie, right? I know that you are Abraham's seed, but you seek to kill me because my word has no place in you. And I think this is great. My word. So Christ is the word. Do you think his word would be different? So do you think his spoken word would be different than what he is? So then he says, my word has no place in you, the truth. The eternal truth. I speak that which I have seen with my father, and you do that which you have seen with your father. Condemnation, shame, divisions, guilt, um, everything. They answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said unto them, If you were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. You know, and then when you look at that, you know, you look at Hebrews and it explains what he was going to do with Isaac, that he said he was able to raise him even from the dead, that God God could make raise him up because he'd have to. That would be the logical explanation, right? But now you seek to kill me, a man that told you the truth, which I have heard of God, this did not Abraham. See, which was really funny is Abraham was way before the law, right? The law had not come yet. He was still underneath the Melchizedek priesthood. He was operating under a different sets of principles. The same what Moses was operating under. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. You know, you go, you go all the way back. The same law. They were underneath the same set of laws that were not the Levitical priesthood. They were underneath a different set of principles. Being that God made the sacrifice. God made the unilateral covenant with uh, Abraham. Which meaning that Abraham had no part in it. Whenever God made the promise with him, he made Abraham go to sleep. And God went through it by himself and Abraham saw it in a dream. So it's always been this unilateral promise that God is no condemnation. He is the one who loves you. He's pronounced you very good that he himself will prove it. Because he is the word. He can't go against himself. That's why Jesus is God. He is God's word. He literally is the exact nature and expression of God. He is God. It, there could be no other way. Because if he is not, then you can have doubt. You can have separation. You can have some sort of idea that, 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 that there's something more to this. Which you have to if you don't conclude that God... Anyway, you, you still have... There, you're not, have nothing summed up yet for you. You're still in the eternal questioning. And you haven't received the truth. Therefore, you can't live. He says, um, and he says, you do the deeds of your father. They said to him, we have not been, been born of fornication. We have one father, even God. And Jesus said to them, if God were your father, you would love me. For I proceed forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. See, Christ is the testimony. 
He is the confirmation. He is the exact evidence of God's eternal word. Showing you that when he went to the cross, you did your ultimate worst to him. To get him to come off that cross. Not realizing what you're doing. Not knowing who he was. And he still didn't come off. To prove to you that it has nothing to do with your works. Whether you're good or evil. Whether you're a Christian or Muslim. Whether you're a Roman. Whether you're, you're, a, you know, you're, you're a pagan. Whatever you are. It, God it doesn't, it doesn't matter to him. All that matters to him is his eternal word that he made by himself unilaterally pronounced over all of his creation before he ever even began creating the material things. God does not change. He does not repent. He saw it all already. You are not shocking him in any way. He already knew, knew what it was going to cost him in order to, to, to fulfill his word. And he did it gladly. You guys don't understand that he did it to himself. You didn't do it to him. He did it to himself to display what his majesty is. To say that Christ isn't God, you dishonor God. <clears throat> Why do you not understand my speech? Even because you cannot hear my word? <laughs> My message, I think that's awesome. Because <clears throat> he's, he's showing them they can't hear it. They're blind, they're, their ears are stopped, their eyes are closed. They cannot hear or see what he's saying. You are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth. Okay, now I want to break this down. The way that we were murderers with Satan... So what Satan did is he deceived Eve unto, and Adam, well, not Adam, but deceived Eve. And then Adam followed suit. But what he did is he, 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 he ended their eternal life, right? He separated them from God, which would end in their death. So imagine if Adam and Eve were going to live as long as God lived, they would live for eternity. And even though they lived over 900 years, that's still a blink of an eye. It was just like an, it was actually like a, a hatchet right to their neck, right? But it was a process of dying. It's like they, they had a slow, he gave them cancer and they died. it took them 900 years to die of it, right? Or whatever, however long it was. But he was a murderer. So the reason being is that the way he murdered them was to get them to disconnect from God. All religions, all people, all sinners, anyone who, who operates in the power of sin, anyone that does that, um, is guilty of murder. Not only your enemies, but also your family and your children. And everyone you've ever loved, you murdered them too because you did not point them to the, the refreshing of their soul. You didn't point them to the resurrection, the way, the truth, and life. You separated them through your doctrines and religions or, or apathy or whatever it is. So you're concluded a murderer with your father because you do your father's works. Christianity does all of their father's works. The, is the, the, the father is the devil. So is Islam, so is Judaism, so is everywhere. When he speaks a lie, he speaks of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. And the lie is anything that distracts you away from God's eternal word. That is the truth. Anything that teaches you other than the truth is a liar. There's only one truth. One proclamation, one God of gods, King of kings, Lord of lords. There's only one. There's only one proclamation. There's only one decision. It's all been made for you, done before you were ever even created. He says, which of you convinces me? He says, and because I tell you the truth and you believe it not, which of you convince me of sin? Which can convict him of sin? And if you say, if I say the truth, why do you believe me? Do why do you not believe me? So, so what he's pointing to is a different evidence. So the evidence that he is in the truth is that he is sinless. And everybody says, well, everyone knows that Jesus was sinless. Well, the thing is, is that no, they didn't. They thought Jesus was a sinner so much that they murdered him. So he's not talking about sins. He's talking about who can convince me of sin. 
He, he says that he obeys the truth, that God is pleased with him. Everything he does is always pleasing to God. He has nothing to fear. He's absolutely, absolutely living before God. But they don't understand that. He's not going through their, through their ideas. He's not pointing to their... So they could, they could convict him of sins because he had called him a blasphemer. They called him all these other things. But they could not convince him of sin. That's the evidence of those who believe the truth. Those who are sinless. And to be a sinner would be to believe that God does not love you. That you're not adequate as you stand. That you that you have to do something other than his word. It's so simple. As people get caught up in, and they say that uh, you, can't, you cannot commit sins. Or you cannot commit sin and that's not true. No man has concluded a sinner. Nobody, God is not looking at your sins. He will not remind you of your sins. But it doesn't change the fact that if you are controlled and dominated by your sin, then you are a sinner in practicality. But it, so um, experientially speaking, you're that way, but positionally you're not. God is not taking account of your sins. He doesn't call you a sinner in any way. He, he calls you son and beloved in the living so that you'll become those things. Because when God speaks things into existence, he calls the things that are not as though they are in order to make them what he wants. Right? So, anyway, sin is not what we think it is. It's not, you know, anyway, so let's just go on. So he says, which of you convinced, so they're t- pointing to works and traditions and laws and regulations, and he's pointing to sinlessness. Um, absolute confidence before God. That's his, that's his proof that what he says, he believes God. And that's our truth. I mean, that's the way that we uh, declare that we are actually believing God is that we are sinless before him. He that is of God hears God's words. Therefore, you hear, you therefore hear them not because you are not of God. So that's big. So anyone that doesn't hear the word that we are preaching right now is not of God. All I'm doing is repeating what God has spoken. I don't, I'm not, I'm not using any doctrine, any dogmas. I'm not doing anything else. All I'm doing is telling you what did God say? Christ is the absolute fulfillment of what God said, the absolute testimony of what God said. That word will never change. That is the truth. Anything else is a lie. So, you know, just because the other day some guy said, oh, because you said that you don't, believe, you don't have to believe to be saved. You don't have to believe Jesus. So he shut off. But I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. What I'm trying to tell you is that you've always been saved. You've never, you've never not been. You're thinking that you're going to get out of hell because you because you believed. And it's like, no, 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 no. See, first off, their idea of heaven or hell is actually eternal life in heaven filled with sin. That is the place of eternal conscious torment. That's why God will not allow you to eat the tree of life until you overcome sin. So to overcome sin is, means to be sinless, Right? Because you see the truth and acknowledge the truth. That everything is by him, for him, and through him. That from the beginning has always been him. That there's never been a doubt, never been anything. That God has never pronounced anything. Never called you naked. Never called you unworthy. Never, not even once. It was you that did it to yourself because you were tricked by Satan. Hold on, hold on. Come on in. What's up, buddy? Got all your weapons? So he comes in with his swords and guns and everything. So he goes, this is so funny. Okay. Um, then the Jews and said unto him, Say we not, well, you are a Samaritan and have a devil? Jesus answered said, I have not a devil, but, but I honor my father and you do dishonor me. And so and the fact that he's saying he honors his father is to be absolutely firm with that eternal word. So if we're going to honor the father, then we look up. Whenever we have, we're accused, whenever anything's happened, any question has been brought up, we go, oh, oh. we don't compare it to religions and doctrines. We compare it to the eternal word that God spoke, and therefore we honor him. Okay. What's up, buddy? You want to say hi? Hi. 
<laughs> so, anyways, well, obviously, um, let me go just a little bit further, and then we're going to have to call it a day because, because my, my boy needs some breakfast or something because I'm hungry too. Okay. He says, I have not a devil, but I honor my father, and you do dishonor me. And I seek not my own glory. There is one that seeks and judges. Truly, truly, I say unto you, if a man keeps my saying, he shall never see death. So ask yourself, has anyone kept his saying? We are keeping his saying, by the way, now. You, me, anyone that is agreeing with me right now, we are keeping his saying where God is the place. He's the only where we look now. We have overcome all the works of the devil, all religions, all images, all idols, all imaginations. We've overcome it all through his word. That's it. We went, what? And then we have been freed. So now he's imparting his life. What's up, buddy? <laughs> so he's imparting his life to us. And we are going to overcome death, you guys. We are going to defeat this shit. We are going to do it. We are God's vessels for this. All right. Talk to you soon. Later.